Hi, I'm Jason Gayheimer, PFR Manager for Bex Hybrids. Today we're going to talk about multi-row with multi-hybrid research. Uh, so at Bex over the years we've done a lot of research on row spacing as well as population, multi-hybrid even, right? And so we, we really helped start the movement on, on multi-hybrid and, and, and help develop that first planner and do some of that initial research. And there's value in being able to change hybrids on the fly throughout the field. Okay, but as things have, hybrids have evolved, breeding has changed, we wanted, to, we wanted to get back into that research. But another question we've really struggled to answer through the plot research that we have done thus far is the row spacing piece as well. Um, we've, we've done years where 30 inch rows seem to be the, the best row spacing and then we'll do it again, the, the same protocol the next year and, and 20s were the best. And so, and even within a year, different locations could, could show different results. And so we really couldn't put our finger on what is the best row spacing. And so we're like, okay, what if we could build a planner that could change on the fly and it could change row spacing, hybrid and population throughout the field. So we partner with a lot of different companies, Precision Planning, Schliff Precision Ag, Yetter, Harvest International, Case, John Deere and Capello to pull off a, a project this magnitude. What we did is we built a revolutionary multi-row with multi-hybrid planter. This planter can plant 10, 20, 30 inch rows, multi-hybrid and variable rate seeding on the fly. We can create a prescription and do all this. So we wanted to do this research to see how much more profitable can we be if we can change row spacing, hybrid and population on the fly throughout the field on every acre. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Travis. He's gonna talk a little bit more about the implementation of how we do this field scale, as well as some of the research that we've gathered over the last couple of years. Thank you, Jason. So I've had the privilege of working on this project uh, since the beginning, right, 2018. So I wanna spend the next few minutes walking through how we set the research up and how we lay the plots out, I shouldn't say plots, the, the field scale research out, and the reason we, we did that. Okay, so this picture I have up here is actually an aerial image of one of the fields we did the, the research on in 2018. Okay, so essentially how we set this plot up, and it actually went through a lot of debate on what was the right way to test this, right? But the, the way we landed or where we landed with this was we essentially made these big strip, replicated strips across the field. Okay, so we, we, we added every combination of hybrid, row width, and, and population, every different possible combination of those three things and we replicated that across the whole field. And the intentions with this were, okay, if we set it up this way, in the future we have the ability to, to analyze this data spatially, okay, any way that we want. So this first, first couple of years, and the, and the way we're analyzing this data to start with is by soil type. So this next picture I have up here, you see the red outline, okay, that's representing a soil type change, okay, within this field. And really what we're doing here is we're, we're looking at, okay, what's the right, combination or the best combination of those of hybrid row width and population within that soil type. Okay, so you can see the combination of 6274 in a 10-inch row at 34,000 plants per acre was best in soil type A. When we move outside of that soil type, okay, move to soil type B, the right the best combination is 6274, 30-inch rows, 38,000. Okay, so in this particular field, in this particular year, Hybrid really didn't matter, okay? 6274 was the best hybrid for that field, okay? But what did matter was row width and population. So the way we want to analyze this data is, okay, if we had that knowledge ahead of time, okay, if we could accurately predict what combination of these three things would be best per soil type in this case, how would that affect profitability? So let's dig into some data, okay? This is 2018, this is the first year we did the research. So this particular farm here, this was a, it's a farm we call the Nash Farm, okay? It's in southern Tipton County. Um, if we were to plant 6274, 30-inch row, and at, at 34,000 plants per acre across the whole field, okay, that whole 80 acres there, we would have had about 247 bushel corn, okay? Again, 6368 in a, in a traditional program, okay, at 30,000, or sorry, 30-inch 30 rows, 34,000 plants per acre, we would end up with around 255 bushel corn. However, if we could have accurately predicted the right combination of those three things and changed the, those different variables on the fly, Okay, which in this case was 6274 and 10-inch rows at 34,000 in one soil type. In the second soil type, it was, again, 6274, but in a 30-inch row at 38,000 plants per acre. If we could have predicted that, we could have increased our production to 270, almost 274 bushel per acre. Okay? So let's look at 2000, or 2020. Okay? 2020 results. It's a different farm, okay? but this one, I think this particular farm is in northern Hamilton County. Again, same concept, it's set up the same way, 59.94 and a 30 inch row at 34,000, again, a traditional management across that whole farm. 
226 bushel per acre. The second hybrid, 6049, again in a 30 inch row, 34,000 plants per acre, around 212 bushel. If we were to accurately predict the right combination of those two hybrids, okay, and the right uh, row width and right population per soil type, we could have increased that profitability pretty significant, okay? And we ended up with around 250, 252 bushel corn, okay, if we were to accurately predict the right combination of those three things. So let's look at it on a two year average, okay? We, in PFR, we like to look at multiple years, okay, in multiple locations. That's what we're trying to represent here in this, this multi year set. So, again, the traditional farming, the 30 inch row, 34,000 plants per acre, on average, between all the hybrids we've tested in the last three years, okay, doing this research, it's around 233 bushel corn. However, if we were able to, to switch back and forth between the right combination of those three variables, we could increase our, our production by almost 30 bushel, okay? Had a really significant impact on profitability, near $100 per acre difference in return on investment, okay? So that, those are big numbers. Okay, so let's look at this a different way. Okay, that's the beauty in what we're doing here and how we're analyzing this data spatially. We can cut this data lots of different ways, and this is another way we're looking at the data. Okay, so Jason said we had the ability to, to look at 10 inch, 20 inch, and 30 inch rows. Okay, so in this graph here, we're, we're uh, trying to show you the, the economic optimum seeding rate per row width, okay, but then we're also trying to capture, okay, what's your profitability look like at, at those different seeding rates as well by row width, okay? So the black line down here at the bottom, that's your 30 inch rows. We end up around that 34 to 35,000 plants per acre. Uh, pretty common, right, for, for a lot of you guys. As we move to narrow rows, we're able to increase populations. Okay, and we're able to do that because we're increasing the, the inter row spacing or the spacing from plant to plant within the row with a narrower configuration. We're on a higher population, somewhere between that 36 and 37,000 plants per acre was the economic optimum. Okay, but more importantly, look what that does to our profitability and our yield levels in those narrow rows. So both years we tested this, both 2018 and 2020, the narrow rows were better on average than the 30 inch corn. We were able to maintain 99% singulation planting soybeans. Okay, that's something you don't normally talk about, singulation and soybeans in the same, the same sentence. Uh, but again, it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? The, the benefits of a narrow row, but also the benefits of the precision of a planting unit in soybeans, and that's really driving profitability. So as we look at planters, okay, and, and move into a concept like this, um, there's a lot of, uh, lot of opportunity, right? Not only for corn, but also for soybeans. And we're also doing testing in wheat, uh, where there's a huge advantage of 10 inch wheat as well. Okay, so that's how we set up the study. That's a little bit of the, the data and the research we've been doing thus far. We're really excited about what we're doing in 2021 as we move north, moving to the 1530 concept, right, and where we have a lot of variation. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jason and let Jason talk a little bit, some, little bit about some of the logistics and, and things around harvest. That's one of the biggest questions we have, particularly with the 10-inch corn. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks, Travis. Yeah, the, the biggest question we do get is how do we harvest it? So if I'm going to plant a field and it's got 10, 20, and 30-inch rows uh, transitioning throughout the field, how am I going to harvest that? Another question that we also get is what about in-season management? Do I have to give up my in-season management? Uh, the answer to the in-season management is no. We, we still want to be able to do in-season management. For these trials, we, we front load a lot of things uh, just to, to collect that data. But as time will progress, if this is something that takes hold, uh, we'll insert tram lines into, into these field uh, prescriptions uh, so we, we can go in and do some of the side dressing or the late season fungicide more, more efficiently with the use of tram lines. So the harvest piece, that's always a great question and usually the first one that comes up. And so what we did is we utilized Capello's all row gladius head. And so if you harvest these row spacings at a slight angle across the field, uh, with this type of technology, uh, it works very well. So that's how, that's how we have uh, found to be able to harvest uh, a field that has varying row spacings throughout it. So greatly appreciate uh, all the partners in this research. Uh, and we're looking forward to continuing it, like Travis mentioned, in some different soil types, uh, doing the 10, 20, 30, as well as the 15, 30 concept. Uh, and we'll keep you updated as we do so. Thanks for watching.